All right, welcome everyone. Um, this is an introduction to um, cap, uh, chapter counseling um, with the BCTLA. My name is Cherise Bouvier. Um, I am the 2022-23 uh, chapter relations coordinator um, for the BCTLA. And we also have Holly. Hi there, my name is Holly Broadland and I am the incoming chapter relations coordinator and I'm looking forward to working with you. Today, we're hoping to let you know a bit about the role. Hang on one second. Here we are. <laughs> uh, our agenda includes the role and importance of chapter counselors, your responsibilities in that job, an annual timeline of what to expect, taking a look at the BCTLA website, specifically the chapter services section, and how to stay connected with us. So we really appreciate you doing the job that you do because you are very important as a contact point with local chapters. You're the ones who know what's going on in your local district, and you can relay that information back to the BCTLA. You can share BCTLA messages and events with your members, and we look forward to seeing you at two chapter counselor meetings per year. I know there's a lot on this slide, but we'll go over it a little more. <laughs> detail in a minute, but this is just an overview of some of the responsibilities of a chapter counselor. So as I mentioned, you'd attend council meetings, there are two of those per year, generally in October, right after our AGM, sorry, our AGM is part of that in October after our conference at the PSA day, and also in the springtime. You would be sharing names of your chapter executive with the BCTLA, reporting to your members, your constituents, promoting BCTLA opportunities, communicating any issues or comments that you have or that your constituents have and sharing those with the BCTLA, sharing your constitution if there are any revisions or bylaws changes, encouraging your chapter members to complete the working and learning condition survey and submitting a chapter report. So that's the overview and we're gonna go over each of those a little more detail right now. So importantly, if you're new to the role, the expenses to attend the BCTLA council meetings, two per year, are paid for by the BCTLA if your chapter is in good standing and has been following the expectations that we have laid out in this webinar. So we love to see people coming in from all different areas of BC, and we want you to know that your expenses are paid, and we have detailed that in our handbook. Another responsibility is to update the coordinator uh, chapters and sections, that's me, of names of your elected chapter counselor and executive officers. So as I mentioned, reimbursement for your council expenses is contingent upon re receiving that information. And we try to do that in a timely manner before the AGM, which will now be happening in October so that we can invite you to the AGM and have your chapter counselor, your current one, attending and being reimbursed for any expenses incurred. After you attend the fall and the spring BCTLA council meetings and AGM, your responsibility would be to report back to your constituents on how it went, anything that they should know, anything that affects them, and continuing on with just promoting BCTLA opportunities to your members, letting them know we've got a webinar coming up or a professional development opportunity or a grant, an award, all sorts of things like that. That's the first slide of the responsibilities and now the next set. In general, we want to hear from you. We want to know what's working, what you have challenges with. All over the province, people are fighting for the role of teacher librarians and library learning commons. So we wanna know if you have any suggestions, any issues coming up for your members. So please let us know by communicating to the BCTLA executive board. We would like to hear if your constitution has been changed or if your bylaws have been amended and you would pass that on to me and then I would pass it on to the BCTLA executive to look at any of those 
potential amendments at one of our executive meetings and approve of those. You can always check in on that on your web, the website to see what we currently have for your chapter. And um, Sharice will be demonstrating that a little more as we go through the website. You have a responsibility to encourage and ensure all chapter members complete the online working and learning conditions survey. It's a really important advocacy tool for the BCTLA, and it always comes out in January. We ask you to promote it, ask people to fill it out, and it'll give us lots of information that we can use to work towards better working conditions in libraries. And finally, we ask you to submit a year-end chapter report preferably as part of your online registration for the spring council meeting, but at the latest by June 15th of the school year. So reimbursement for council meeting expenses is again contingent upon receiving this information. And we ask you to fill that out as soon as you can so that we know what's going on with your chapter. We know that you're active and that you're doing certain activities. If we can share them with our other members or um, get inspired by you, we'd love to hear about it. Mm -hmm. Are there any other responsibilities, Sharice, that I should be bringing up at this time? I know it probably seems like a lot with eight different ones I've gone through. Yeah, I know that's the basics of it. Just that, um, you know, whenever information comes up, our chapter counselors are one of our quickest links to um, our membership and um, and sometimes even people that have maybe forgotten to get their um, membership uh, together. Sometimes our chapter counselors have those other contacts as well. So we're just really um, relying on our chapter counselors to make sure that the information that they're getting um, is being passed along. That's one of the most important things is when you get information from your coordinator, just to please pass it on right away, all the pieces that are relevant to um, the members that, that that are attached to you and connected to your to your chapter. Um, yeah, just you're you're a really important link for us. Absolutely. <laughs> so I'll pass it over to Sharice, who's been uh, yeah. doing this role for a couple of years, so knows all the important dates. <laughs> Yeah, um, and so one of our important dates has changed recently, just that we've switched our AGM now to a fall AGM. Um, but um, September is an important time to um, consider any grants that you may be applying for for your um, for your chapter. Um, there are some available. I'll show you that on the website as well. There's a link for it. Um, so September is a good time to consider that if you need one for the year. Um, it's also when you need to get your um, or beginning of the years when you need to get us that list of who those executive members are on your uh, local chapter executive uh, for the year. Um, and we kind of need that to operate. Sometimes we need to communicate with chapters in different ways and have um, all that contact information. Um, keep in mind, those executive members should be um, BCTLA members in good standing um, in particular. OK, we encourage you to encourage membership all the time um, with with everyone. But in particular, that is a requirement of um, of your executive members. Um, and then we have our fall conference and now it'll be the AGM. Um, so that's one of the two meetings that we do expect chapter counselors to be uh, in attendance at. If there's something happening and you're not able to make it, then we do really request that you um, try to get someone to replace you. So that could be an, another executive member or just someone that's willing to um, come to the meeting, be a voice for your chapter and also pass on any of the information that comes up from the meeting. Um, they are business meetings for the BCTLA, so it is important um, uh, for the association to be able to make decisions that we do have members there um, and present that are able to vote. Um, and so those chapter counselors are those voting members for each chapter. Um, so that is um, something that we really hope for, is that we get attendance um, from chapters far and wide across the province. Um, we really do uh, like to see people from all the parts because uh, often they're held in the lower mainland, but it's so great to, um, to learn um, from each other and to kind of have that experience from across the province. Absolutely. I've had a couple of chances to go to those meetings and it's always exciting to see people from all over the place. Yeah, they're great. Lots great of good networking. perspectives. Yeah. 
get to meet people and, and find out what they're up to too. It's great. Kind of great sure. at the same time as you get to represent. Yeah. Chapter. Okay, so January is a really important time um, in particular that we need chapter counselors to be um, paying attention to their emails and forwarding their emails to their membership. Um, we really appreciate when our chapter counselors are um, pushing uh, the the working and learning conditions survey um, to their uh, membership so that we can have um, as much um, response for the survey as possible. It always makes our data um, that much better when we can have more responses. Um, and so we really appreciate when chapter counselors uh, send those emails out and those reminders. This past year, we actually had prizes. And so um, that was really great, too. I think it helped, but um, it helps when our chapter counselors get those uh, to members in a timely way that they can have their best chances earning those prizes, too, when they fill in those surveys. As this year's Working and Learning Conditions survey compiler, I was really appreciative of all of you who got that message out. Yeah. A big one. <laughs> um, there are, um, we do ask that you kind of also be promoting the BCTLA awards. Um, the deadline for those is generally in March. So um, just another kind of um, time of year to be paying attention to those emails and just getting that information out to as many members as possible so that um, we know that we're um, awarding uh, awards to uh, TLs from across the province. And then um, late, late um, April, sometimes early May, there's uh, a spring council meeting. So that's the second meeting that we ask that you attend um, as much as possible in person. Um, and if you're not able to, to find a representative, uh, again, because that would be a business meeting where um, some changes happen and, and voting occurs. Um, and so, again, policy will be in the handbook for around um, travel and, and costs that are covered. Um, but that's another fun time to get together with uh, teacher librarians while we also um, just kind of learn about where things are at for teacher librarians and help the association make any decisions that they need to make. I believe going forward, there will be a hybrid option for all of those meetings, but I would highly recommend trying to come in person if you can. It's really a special experience when you get to be there in the room with everyone else. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, like we reiterated a little bit earlier, um, another really important piece of the chapter uh, counselor role is to make sure that your report is submitted. Um, and it's just letting us know what your chapter was up to for the year, um, what were some of the fun details, maybe what was some of the advocacy that was going on, um, maybe some of your strategies around some of the challenges, um, and maybe some of the events that you had. Um, so that just allows us to also um, know that you're active um, and to give us a sense of, of what your chapter has been accomplishing and what they've been up to. Um, and we have had a request to try and share some of that information out a little bit more. So that's one of our goals, but um, we do like to hear what you're up to. Um, and that is um, a requirement as well that that's filled out so that the next year your chapter can have uh, those chapter counselors attend and have their expenses paid um, at those meetings. Um, we are looking to try and have those back uh, by June 15th. Um, earlier is even better. Uh, we know that that's a busy time of year. Um, so we do give you till June 15th, uh, to complete them. Um, but yeah, an important part of being a chapter counselor is just getting that report in at the end of the school year. Great. All right. So, um, I am actually going to head to the website, uh, and, and I will uh, stop sharing. Holly's going to, yeah. Awesome. So hopefully you've been on this website before, bctla.ca. Mm -hmm. So this is the main page here. Um, we just got some information about a webinar coming up right now at the moment, but that kind of is uh, a constantly changing depending on what's kind of uh, going on and what's happening next for us. Um, so if just bring your attention to the bar at the top, 
chapter services is where you're going as a chapter counselor, you're going to get lots of the information that you need. So just to start off uh, chapter grants, there are um, chapter grants available. Um, it just talks about what you um, your eligibility um, and kind of how the grant looks and, and how to apply. OK, and then uh, you can see the history and whatnot. The application form is there as well. Um, so if it's something that your chapter um, would like to um, pursue, the information is there under chapter services and it's got its own link. Um, the other thing that I'll just flip to um, first is chapter constitutions. Um, if you are someone um, with a, um, you might be just kind of curious about chapters and how they're formed, um, or you might be needing to make an amendment, or maybe you, you feel like it's time to update your constitution. There is um, quite a bit of information here. Um, there's some examples. Um, there is a template here as well that you can use to write one if you're starting from scratch. Um, and then there's a bit of a webinar here that's been recorded in the past just to walk you through that process of um, creating your constitution. And then here is a great um, resource as well. Um, it is a link to current constitution. So it's our archive of all the constitutions. And it's always good just to kind of double check in here and make sure that your constitution is up to date um, and that your records are the same as what we're showing. Um, and you can kind of see everyone else's examples there as well. Okay, so back to the website chapter services. And then again, this is probably for most new chapter counselors going to be the spot where you look for information the most. Um, it has that outline of what we just gone through in terms of uh, a timeline. Uh, and also the responsibilities are here in greater detail. Um, and we also really want you um, to know that the handbook is also on this um, on this website, and this is always um, a, a, has a great deal of Im information for chapter counselors in it. It gets updated. It'll probably be October now that our AGM is in October, so it does take kind of a little bit of time for it to be updated to that year. But in general, the information that's there, um, even if it is uh, September, this is still a great place to go and look for information. Um, it's going to list your executive, your responsibilities in more detail, but it also, if you're looking for information about um, like expenses when you do come to a chapter council meeting, it's here in the handbook as well. Um, and then it just gives you more information about the BCTLA, um, and it gives you a nice checklist as well at the end of the handbook as to kind of what your roles are as well. Um, so this is a really great resource um, for anyone that might be new to the chapter counselor role. Um, and really, our website is always a great source of information. Absolutely. So, but yeah, um, we really encourage you to check that out um, if you're in the role of chapter counselor. Excellent. And. I'm just going to pop back into my slideshow. <laughs> and uh, that was our website. Again, always being updated and has lots of great information. Hmm. And we're always pretty changing. much <laughs> ready to wrap it up. Um, we want to let you know that we want to hear from you. We appreciate what you do and we want to stay connected. So if you have questions, you can reach out to the coordinator of chapters and sections with our specific email address bctla chapter relations at gmail.com or if you just want to reach the president of the bctla you can go to bctla at bctf.ca and we will do our best to get back with you keep in mind that we are volunteer teacher librarians just like you are so um, never be afraid to particularly for myself i know um, my email inbox can sometimes get snowed over so you know poke me and be like, hey, I sent you an email five days ago. Can you let me know how <laughs> things are going? And that's, that's totally fine. Um, and I just Absolutely. wanted to say a big thank you to everyone here. Thanks for taking the time to watch this recording. And also thank you for volunteering to be an integral part of the BCTLA. We really value our chapter counselors and we hope we can help you feel connected and that 
you're providing a service to your chapter and members that builds community. We appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks for taking the time to be part of this great network of teacher librarians. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And let us know if you have any questions. <laughs> Goodbye for now.